Tuesday, May 2nd. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be taking a tour of the front yard garden. And I came out here because it's May and I'm about to harvest a broccoli. I wanted to share this with you before we harvest it. So right next to our row of Roma tomatoes, we have this crown of broccoli here. It's a pretty good size. And we're gonna be uh, harvesting it maybe for dinner. Uh, out here, we have other things growing, including uh, this other brassica. I can't remember what this is. Oh, this is another broccoli, Eastern Magic. So we'll see how this variety performs during our warmer months. The David Austin Rose, the Lady of Shalott Rose. This is its second year in the ground, so it's really blooming now. It's got this really nice uh, orange color. This one is an emerging bloom, and then got some uh, bigger blooms here. And then next to it is Hello, another. Grant. Hello, Grant. So Grant's out here having some mulberries from our mulberry um, row that we may get to and show you later. Uh, so here is another brassica. This is um, one of those, um, another one of those uh, Eastern Magic. Uh, broccolis. And I was just seeing if we could get some side shoots, but that's not happening. So I'll just remove this plant in a bit. Next to the Eastern Magic broccoli is a patty pan squash. We have some patty pans to harvest now. And then next to this patty pan, we're trying to grow a yellow squash. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see, get a better sense of our space out here. But this is cereal rye. Um, we're growing a lot of this so that we can have material as mulch. When you purchase straw and hay, there could be herbicides in it, so we're trying to grow more of it. Uh, we have a lot of sun in Southern California, so we'll capture the sun's energy and turn it into material that we can turn into soil. Uh, this is a fire thorn bush, and I've gone to shape it into this interesting uh, uh, shape, and then we have this African blue basil, and I've shaped it into like a kidney shape. So I wanted to get it to grow some more. And in front, we have some chard. I grow this for ornamental reasons. This is the Bright Lights chard. We got some, uh, I think that's the peppermint candy stick one, and then there's a yellow one. And they grow pretty tall. The seed, starting to form seeds. They grow pretty tall, so I had to chop it and then we are using it uh, as mulch. And here we have a patch of gladiolus, and they're, they were uh, planted in the winter time. We get so many gladiolus bulbs that it's hard to figure out what to do, so I just plopped it here. So we have a good number of blooms now. These are planted pretty deep, at, at least a foot, so that they don't require staking. Um, and then out here we have a bunch of artichokes. This year I haven't been eating too much of them, so they're, we're allowing them to flower. And it's May 1st, which means I should be planting okra, but I don't have space to plant them. I guess when you just let the artichokes on the plant, it, the plant doesn't die back. I've been waiting for it to die back so we can plant artichokes. This is a dazzling blue kale. We have another one here. The kales I grow for the ornamental aspect of them. So this is one of those dino kales, but it's got this really neat um, blue and purple color to it. And I guess Grant wants to show us um, the mulberry that he's getting, so we'll we'll make our way over there. But first, let's check out over here. This is a a row of the uh, purple hominy. Um, it's a pozole corn. It's new to us, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I grew these in root trainers, and I didn't grow enough transplants, so our um, row stops right there, and we have more room over there, so. We'll plant another corn variety in a few weeks, in a week or two, so we can uh, fill out this space and uh, maximize. Here's another brassica. I'm always succession planting them so that we can have uh, broccoli or some type of um, broccolini hybrid. Here's another one. Uh, transplanted some of the paprika. This is a uh, magnar, or let me see. Let me look at the tag. Um, magyar. It's a new to me paprika. So we have some growing there. Uh, and then here we have some carrots. This is bolero, it's a hybrid carrot. And the seeds are pelleted, so I got it for the convenience of sowing uh, carrots. 
it really helps the pelleted. And then we have succession carrots that have popped up. And I have them planted on the edge because with carrots, you don't want too much water for them. So out here, we can control better control the irrigation and we just limit our irrigation to here. And then any, um, and then we'll water this every now and then probably with, with clay, probably um, once every other month at this point. After they sprout, I may water once a month or once every other month. If you get too much water, you're gonna get very, um, very stringy. You're gonna get short carrots that have a lot of roots and they're gonna branch out. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything else interesting out here. Uh, here is more of a wildflower patch. We got some uh, sweet peas, California poppy, scabiosa, a bachelor's button, and some uh, sunflowers that are down here. And these are super short because I grew them as transplants. And I found that one way you can control the height of a sunflower is if you stunt, stunt them a little bit, grow them in a pot and let the roots bind a little bit and they'll keep them short. Um, and you got uh, a volunteer red leaf lettuce, uh, a cabbage that I'm experimenting with. And over here we have early sun glow corn this is a sweet corn it's a old-fashioned corn it's uh it tends to have more uh, chew to it and you have to harvest it within a specific window if you let it go on the stock too long it will get pretty starchy and mealy um here we have some garlic chive and i already harvested a bunch of garlic chive and then next to the corn or between the rows of corn we have pinto beans that have recently popped up and we got more brassicas over there those are succession plants they're either cauliflower, some broccoli, or some other thing. Um, and then at the very tip of my finger, there we got some red onion plants over there. And uh, once again, this is the to uh, Roma tomato row. And there are more things going down that way, but we're gonna focus over on our corner garden. But I, before um, we go back to it, I wanna show you this Japonica striped maize corn, one that I grow for the cool variegated leaves so I'm still trying to figure out which ones make a lot of the stripes some make a lot some uh, don't make any at all and uh, so yeah let's go back over here got um, some potatoes in the grow bag I don't want the potatoes to get out of control so uh, I hope that when this is done we'll just lift the whole grow bag and, and get all the potatoes that are in there here is a spot where I hope to grow some cereal rye or actually the wheat, the Utrich wheat for straw to collect as mulch material. But uh, so far we got some volunteer, a bunch of volunteer borage, some volunteer um, mustard or even, uh, that might be mustard or actually rapini. Um, so that's what we have. And then in this bed, we have uh, watermelon. So this is one of my favorite ones, the Klondike Stripe Blue Ribbon. I just sowed some seeds that was collected last year and the idea is that it can sprawl over here and grow. And finally, we'll um, look at our mulberry. Um, mulberry trees will grow tall and one problem with that for us is that it blocks out the sunlight from other plants. Uh, as a compromise, I've trained them along a fence to keep them short. Uh, and. When it comes to mulberries, it's difficult to keep them short and get fruit because if you cut them, um, they're not going to produce fruit. They actually produce fruit on, on established branches. So what grows this year may not produce fruit. It's the one uh, you have to wait till the following year. That's when it produces a lot of fruit. So we got a lot of mulberries here. These are the, these are the small ones. And then uh, here's a Pakistan mulberry that we're starting to grow here for this area. And, and the, the plant, the tree that we have in the backyard, I'm likely going to uh, remove it. Uh, for now, the, the kids are using it to climb, so, but at some point I really need to take it out because it creates too much shade. So uh, that's uh, what's growing on in the front yard garden. Thanks for coming out and checking out and see how it's doing. And we'll see you in the next video.